Have you ever wondered where you really stand with God? Are you overcome with feelings of guilt because of things you've done wrong? Are you tired of religion that focuses on rules that you can't keep? Have we got good news for you? It's time to listen in on some casual conversation with Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezinski and discover what true freedom is all about. This is Growing in Grace. Thank you so much for tuning in to Grow It in Grace this week. I'm Joel Brzezinski. Mike Kapler is with me. They call me the Breeze. They call him the Cap. And if you have other names for us, just keep them to yourselves. Uh, we don't want to hear it. <laughs> we have very thin skin. We can't take criticism on this program. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> just kidding. We do get some, not a whole lot, but um, we do appreciate you uh, letting us know you're out there, uh, maybe in the form of an email or a comment on the uh, blog or on YouTube. Uh, something like that. And uh, a lot of positive comments we get, along with the thousands of uh, downloads of the podcast uh, every month. And so we do appreciate uh, you letting us know you're out there and sharing it with a friend, of course, too. Well, of course. I mean, that's what this is all about, spreading good news, right? And certainly that's what this podcast is centered around. I was, um, I won't say what it was, but I was at an event recently this past week, Joel, and got to see somebody I'm friends with, actually their family as well, but friends on Facebook with her and, and uh, got to see her for the first time in quite a while, which was nice face to face. And, and she was introducing me and, and uh, was telling her friend that we do this podcast and it's about the, the covenants, <laughs> the, <laughs> the old and the new. And, and uh -huh. I said, yeah, you know, I, I guess that's that's pretty much what this podcast revolves around. Uh, I think in the first years of our podcast, it, it wasn't quite so much about that directly. Um, it was, but we didn't really put it in that context. It was about our identity in Christ, the, the unconditional love of God, uh, grace, the gift of righteousness, all those kinds of things, which is still a part of the podcast. But we have kind of gone into a direction, carrying all of that with us and, and focusing. Uh, we think maybe uh, it will help our, our, it has helped our growth in, in God's grace and understanding the gospel. And hopefully it is for you too. And that is understanding that when you have an old covenant that was given to a nation of people, a race of people, the Jewish people, and that it came to an end and something new began through Jesus Christ that everyone would be invited into, this kind of changes the way you approach the Bible. I mean, just it almost changes everything about how you approach the Bible, don't you think? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it changes the way we approach life in Christ. Because, I mean, if if we're trying to live our life in Christ based upon that Old Covenant that we've talked about, like you say, so many times now uh, in the last few years, if we're trying to bring that Old Covenant perspective into what we now know as the New Covenant, uh, we're really going to miss out on what life in Christ is because they are entirely different. It's based upon an entirely different priesthood, uh, the priesthood of the Levites versus the priesthood of Jesus who lives forever. <laughs> the Levites died. Jesus lives forever. Uh, it's based on so many different things and so many better things. The book of Hebrews uses that word better so many times. And so it is good to have that understanding that when you pick up the Bible, it's all written for us, for to give us understanding, but it's not all written to us. And it doesn't all directly apply to us because a lot of it was, again, old. It was done away with. And now we need to focus in on in, in our lives in Christ on uh, on the new covenant, which really is based upon the life of Jesus Christ and not our own works. Well, last week we were talking about those who are today under the new covenant, yet because they haven't understood the separation of the old versus the new, they have had this desire to become teachers of the law. Uh, Paul described these people, and they would depart from some of the good things that, that God would have us focus on. And this was on last week's podcast at growingingrace.org, so you can check that out. But there were some things that Paul wanted us to focus on as believers in Christ. But those who had this desire to become a teacher of the law would actually lead people away from those good things and bring them into probably a place of confusion. Paul called it fruitless discussion when you're talking about the law. And, you know, we talk about the law on this podcast, the Mosaic Law, but we put it in the context of realizing it is something that is obsolete and has, as you said, Joel, has been replaced with something far better, the New Covenant. But there are those who would try to teach it in the context 
of the commandments, the law, the, those things that came from Moses to the Jewish people. They try to bring it into the new covenant. Mm -hmm. And and what that uh, unfortunately does is, is cause a lot of confusion out there. It, it brings fruitless discussion. And uh, if you're trying to teach it in a way that somehow it's an ingredient to bring life or justification or sanctification or cleansing, then it becomes fruitless discussion. Yeah. And so this week we want to bring about some fruitful discussion. Not that last week's talk wasn't fruitful discussion, because hopefully in the sharing of that, you know, talking about how those who desired to be teachers of the law, they didn't understand what they were talking about. I mean, if you can imagine Paul talking to these people, Gentiles mostly, who were try trying to become teachers of the law, <laughs> they didn't even understand what they were talking about. And you see a lot of that in the church, of course, today as well. People trying to mix that old covenant into the new. And as we talked about a little bit last week, it bore fruit to death. Paul uses that phrase. It bears fruit to death as opposed to the ministry of the Spirit bearing fruit to life, bearing fruit to God. There's a big difference there. If you're under the law, if you're trying to be a believer in Jesus Christ and, and yet go about trying to live this life in Christ by the law, it's going to still bear fruit to death, not eternal death. You know, you're not going to lose your salvation by being put under the law or by putting yourself under the law. It's nothing like that. But it doesn't bear good fruit. It bears bad fruit because the law entices sin. But in order to bear fruit to God, Paul said we had to die to the law. Specifically, the Jews had to die to the law. Gentiles were never even brought under this thing, <laughs> under the law. But in order to bear fruit to God, it's through faith. It's by believing God. It's by the life of Jesus Christ in us. That, that's how we bear fruit unto God, and it's a good thing. Yeah, and what you're talking about is found in Romans 7, starting with verse 4. Paul started out explaining this relationship of how the Jews had formerly been married to the law and now are married to Christ. So there was this, not only a separation, but literally, and, and not even a divorce. It was a killing of the people, putting them in the body of Christ, and, and then making them alive again. But that allowed the separation between the marriage to the law and being married to Christ. But Paul goes on here and he says, you were made to die to the law through the body of Christ, so that you might be joined to another, to him who is raised from the dead, in order that we might bear fruit for God. For while we were in the flesh, the sinful passions which were aroused by the law were at work in the members of our body to bear fruit for death. So there was this bearing of fruit going on, even under the works of the law, which could not bring life or righteousness. There still was fruit, but it was fruit it was being born for death, and um, we've been released from that law. Uh, as Gentiles, it's true that we were never under it, but for the sake of argument, all people, those who think they were under the law and those who actually were, have been released from it, having died to that to which they were bound, so that why? So what? what? What does that mean? So that we might serve in newness of the Spirit and not the oldness of the letter. Uh, this is in Romans 7, and of course, when we see something like this, Joel, we're here now to serve in the newness of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, not the oldness of the letter. Remember what Paul said that we covered recently in, in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, the Spirit gives life, but the letter, the law, kills. And uh, there you have it. The, the, making this connection, though, between the fruit of the law, which brought death, versus the fruit of the Spirit, that brings life, and that we want to continue on down this path. Yeah, and you know, Jesus was talking to his disciples, and he told them the way to bear fruit. And it had nothing to do with law. It had nothing to do with, well, here's a bunch of things that you need to do, and then you'll bear fruit. What did Jesus say? He simply said, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. That's the key right there. Apart from him, we can do nothing. And then Paul said, to go right along with that, through Christ, I can do all things. He said, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. So in order to do all things, you know, whatever it is that we do, the bearing of fruit unto God, in order to do that, it's through Christ. It's not through our own attempts. That's the big difference in this life in Christ, if, if we could get that across. The Old Covenant was all about what we can do. The people of Israel said, we're going to do these things that you told us to do, God. 
<laughs> they will be our life. They will be what we do. Of course, they failed miserably. Jesus came and he made it so simple. He just said, I am the vine. He, you know, he compared it to plant life. Of course, a branch is not anything in and of itself, but it draws its life from the vine. You know, talking about a grapevine there. It's the same with the tree. The trunk of the tree, the roots go down. The branches are nothing in and of themselves, but they are joined into the tree, and they are nothing without the tree. And the tree is their life. The tree sustains them. The tree doesn't tell the branches, all right, I'm going to force you to bear some fruit. No, the branch says, okay, I'm in you. I receive my life from you. And then what the tree does, what the vine does, is it produces the life that goes into the branches. And the branches naturally bear fruit. They don't produce fruit. They bear what the uh, life of the vine sends to them, so to speak. So it's really simple. We just put our focus on Jesus Christ, who is the author and perfecter of our faith and who himself is our life. Yeah, that's good. Paul said in, in Galatians 5, I say, walk by the Spirit and you will not carry out the desire of the flesh. And then he went on right after that to say, if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. And then a little bit after that, he tells us what the fruit of the Spirit is. And we, we've covered that recently, but uh, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, against such things there is no law. So we can see some things going on here between the works of the law and, and the fruit that gets born from that, which leads to death. Then there's the fruit of the Spirit, and I like what you were saying there, Joel, because this isn't something that we just produce, and we don't try to produce fruit to prove who we are, that we're a Christian, that we're part of the family of God. We, we don't do anything to prove that. We bear his fruit. He, or should, I should say that he produces it through us, mm -hmm. but it, it's not of our own doing like what would take place under the system of the works of the law. Right. And so, uh, you know, there's so much good, there's so much that happens in our life in Christ that, let's put it this way, so many people are trying to make stuff happen in their lives in Christ and kind of putting out a, a, a futile attempt. It's, it's just futile uh, to try to produce the stuff that only the Spirit can produce in and through us. And so that's why Jesus said, come to me, all you who labor, all you who are weary, I will give you rest for your souls. I'll give you rest. Rest in me, Jesus says. Find your rest in me. You're not going to have to struggle and strive to uh, produce good fruit. But as you, uh, as you put your trust and your faith in Jesus Christ, and as you simply abide, you already are in Christ. And so let that be what your awareness is, that you are in Christ and that he is in you. And he produces fruit that you bear as you rest in him. Well, all of this talk about fruit, you know, Jesus said in the seventh chapter of Matthew, you will know them by their fruits. Now, we often think that this is how we'll know those who are considered to be sincere believers. But the context has to do with being aware of false prophets, nothing to do with believers. We'll talk about that. You will know them by their fruits next week, right here on Growing in Grace. This has been Growing in Grace with Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezinski, heard online through various internet sources around the world each week. To access hundreds of past programs, visit graceroots.org. Share it with a friend and listen again next week for more Growing in Grace.